Shannon Waldron is set to kick off for the Eagles. And deep. It's Stacy Drivey on the near side. And we got Ray Williams on the far side standing on the goal line. Some excited fans here at the stadium ready as Waldron comes forward. And this game is underway. High over and it goes to Driver deep in the end zone and he will not take it out. First and 10 Clemson at their own 20 yard line. Let's take a look now at the Clemson Tiger offense. First of all, the quarterback is Mike Epley after a great first weekend last week. Flagler, tremendous running at that tailback spot and the blocker back at uh, fullback. Flanker, so important. Alley, Butler and Dunn, other receivers in the offense for the Tigers. And the all-important line, Engel, Farr, ACC Player of the Week on offense, Swing, Cheatham, and Truce. Stacy Driver now is in a tailback. Mike Epley back. Intended for Alley. We've got a penalty flag down. All right, this could possibly be pass interference. The we're going to take a look at it. The pass was right on the mark, and the defensive player, no, they're not going to call uh, pass interference. Here goes Epley back. He has a man open, tries to hit him. Good defense, it looks like. Penalty's going to be on Clemson. An That's a procedure. Receiver. Ineligible receiver. Ineligible receiver downfield, and we'll start it all over again now as Clemson gets the first play away. And it'll be the loss of down second and 15 now for Clemson. Ball placement at the 15-yard line, of course. Swing, Dale swing over the ball at center. That's driver. Driver is met by Diossi. Here's the defensive front for Boston College. Thomas, Harrington, Ruth, tremendously exciting player up front of the nose guard. Swanky. Then the linebackers. Diossi, we'll see him in there a lot. Von Nesson. And the defensive backfield. They could play an important part in this game. The option play with that play now. Good move by the defense for the Eagles. On the third and 14, Rob Swanky from his right tackle spot. Good lateral strength movement. Exactly the position you don't want to get in in the first series. It happened to Western Carolina last week against Clemson. This week it was the Tigers. Third and long, and you don't want to be in that position. Hatcher, Dale Hatcher, the punter, gets a nice high floating kick away. Brian Brennan is deep, takes it at the 32. Brennan swarmed under there. Jeff Suttle making the tackle for the Tigers. And so Boston College now takes over with pretty good field position on about the 38-yard line. The offense, of course, we've mentioned many times, Doug Flutie at quarterback, Stratford, your tailback, Besick, is the fullback. Here are the receivers. Brian Brennan, the favorite target of Flutie, and the men up front for the fine Boston College offense. Stratford. And he makes it just over the 40-yard line. Edgar Pickett making the tackle from his left-end spot. He had four tackles in the opening game of the season last week. We mentioned up front, Boston College is not a running team, but in order to play against Clemson and be able to score, they're going to have to show some kind of run. That was the I formation. They tried to tell back Clemson, true to their reputation, right there for the stop. Second down, six yards to go for Boston College out of the I formation. Flutie dropping straight back, and it's knocked down up front. Well, five Looked like nine. Jim Scott might have got a hand on it, and uh, James Robinson also in there. Robinson, 6'5", once he put those hands in the air, can be a pretty good obstacle. The defensive front now for Clemson. Pickett, Robinson, Devane, Brown, and Mack with the two freshman redshirt linebackers. Jim Scott now is in at right tackle, and there's the defensive secondary for you. So, third down, six yards to go for Boston College just into the first quarter of action. Big rush by Perry, but the pass is complete. Childers made the stop, 
On Brennan, Brennan with seven catches last week for 149 yards. You're going to see the keys to this game, both keys. There's Flutie and Perry. They're both keys. Flutie wins this one as he throws a perfect pass with 320 pounds bearing down on him. First down, B.C. Childers, the senior two-year letterman. First down for Boston, just inside the 50. Perry nosed up with Bicknell. Bicknell, the snap. Stratford, the carry. Childers almost got him behind the line of scrimmage, and it's out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Tyrone Davis along with Edgar Pickett to make the stop. Poor tackling by Clemson. They defense that play very well, stretched it out to the sideline, but when they had their opportunity to drop him for a loss, they couldn't come up with the tackle. Second and seven now for the Eagles. Childers, out of the three tackles last week, had one for a loss of minus four yards against Western Carolina. That time, he bounced off the runner. Troy Stratford, he's only a 5'8 sophomore. Slot to the far side. Stratford's the man in motion. Flutie gets the big rush and dumps it off to Stratford. Nice cut and the tackle made by Terrence Mack. James Robinson also in on the stop. How quick Flutie is. Perry again uh, just blowing through the line. Flutie with a little stagger step and found his outlet receiver. Picked up a few yards. Third and short. Three yards to go for the Boston first down. The ball on the 43-yard line. Devane comes in for Perry at nose guard. Stratford is back in the I formation tailback spot. Flutie likes to roll. He's going to tuck it under his arm. Good tackle. Fumble on the ball. Race. Jimmy Scott was racing for the football, and he comes up with it along with Henry Walls. All right, they talk about Clemson's freshman linebackers. Watch Henry Walls make a great play here. Flutie can run for a first down. Walls will shed the blocker and hit Flutie. Forces the ball loose. Clemson comes up with it. And that's a big play for the Tigers early in the game. Jim Scott, the 6'4", 250-pound senior, making the recovery. Big break for Clemson here in the early going. After they had their ears pinned back on the first series, they now get the ball inside Boston College territory at the 48. Stacy Driver up the middle has the nice hole and makes his way down to the 36-yard line. Last week, we talked about Clemson being more diversified on offense. But be mindful of the fact that they've run the ball 77% of the time for the last two years, 81 and 82. That's their strength, and that's what they want to do. So after the David Thomas stop, it's another first down for Clemson. Ball placement on the 37-yard line. Pull back up the middle, Mack, Kevin Mack. Clemson testing that middle right away. Well, Diossi is the strength of the uh, BC defense, and if they can attack that defense at, at its strength, which is Diossi in the middle there, and gain yardage, they're going to cause some problems for the Eagles. They'll have to make adjustments to their strength. Alley to the far side, Butler to the near side. It'll be a second down, six yards to go for the Tigers. Ball on the 33. That's Driver, and Driver just makes it back to the 30, a gain of two yards on the play. Von Nessen got the initial hit on Driver. He's a 6'2", 228-pound senior at that right linebacker spot. Yeah, so, so quick is Driver. Louvisher was in the backfield, number 93, had a shot at him, but uh, Stacy just showed him an ankle, took it away, and he was off around the left end. Back to fullback. Stacy Driver in a tailback. Epley, your quarterback now. That's Driver with the hole closed up. Very, very quickly. Scott Harrington at left tackle wearing a linebacker number. Number 52. He's 256 pounds and six foot two, a two-year letterman at junior. And Pauling will come in to try for the field goal. Bob Pauling, 40 straight extra points, and a terrific field goal kicker. Peretti will be the holder. Ball placement down at the 37-yard line. It is up, and it barely makes it over. It's good. Had good height on the kick. Pauling, Bob Pauling from St. Matthews, South Carolina, puts Clemson on the board. Three to nine. 
seven seconds remaining in the first quarter. Double play. Anyone who pitches for a living loves a beautifully turned twin killing. Hi, this is Tom Seaver for the Sporting News, and we have a twin killing for you. Two issues for the price of one to introduce you to the Sporting News, the Sports Bible. That's right, you'll get 26 issues of the Sporting News for just $9.99. Two for the price of one. And you can't buy the Sporting News for a lower price anywhere. You know, I've been reading the Sporting News since I was a kid, and the athletes and the fans themselves have been reading the Sporting News since 1886. It's the magazine that gives me the no-nonsense details of all Major League Sports and college action, the ins and the outs, and the behind-the-scenes stories of all the big four action sports, baseball, football, basketball, and hockey, every single week of the year. Plus, highlights of boxing and tennis, soccer, horse racing, and all the rest. On the road, as much as athletes are, we really appreciate the fact that major sports stories are covered by more than 40 feature writers around the country reporting on the scene where the action is. To love sports is to love the sporting news, the sports Bible. Why don't you subscribe today and here's a friend to tell you how. That's right, Tom. You get the sporting news at the low rate of 38 cents an issue. 26 issues for $9.99. That's half the regular subscription price. Why not take advantage of this special two-for-one double play offer now? You know, you can't get the sporting news for a lower price anywhere. To subscribe to the Sporting News, just call this toll-free number, 1-800-544-1000. That's 1-800-544-1000. Take advantage of this special two-for-one offer. You get 26 issues for only $9.99. That toll-free number is 1-800-544-1000. Remember, you can't get the Sporting News at a lower price anywhere. Call 1-800-544-1000. 1-800-544-1000. Igwai Buike to kick off for Clemson after the 47-yard field goal by Bob Polling. We've got Ken Bell along with Tyrone Taylor deep. And now Taylor stays deep. Bell coming up to about the 20-yard line, I guess, just to converse with uh, Bisek as we get set to kick off. Three to nothing, Clemson. Are it's so important uh, to get out on top in this game. If Clemson can get the lead and get up by seven or ten points, they can run the ball. They can dictate to Boston College with their offense. If they were to fall behind to Boston College and have to go to the air exclusively, you might consider them in a bad position. So that three points, although it's not much of a lead, is a pretty big three points at this, at this juncture in the game. Okay, Igwai Buike kick six out of his eight kickoffs last week which were unreturnable let's see what he can do now goodbye Tyrone Taylor watches it go out of the end zone Boston College first and ten at their own 20 Igwai Buike a lot of people just call him Donald once again <laughs> puts it through the end zone Igwai Buike was kicking 63 yard field goals in the pregame and laughing about it with plenty of, plenty of distance to spare, so that's no surprise. Bicknell, Jack Bicknell, the son of the coach over the ball at center. He's a 6'1", 254-pound junior, snaps the ball. Tailback offense once again. Stratford, Troy Stratford met by Henry Walls. One of the things that Flutie does for an offense, even an offense that's running the ball, is he makes the defense think. Is this guy going to roll out? Is he going to throw it? Is he going to run himself? And when you have to think, you hesitate half a step, and that can make your running game even a little bit better. So it's not that surprising that the Eagles are running on first down. Brennan to the near side. McKenzie to the far side. A gain of three. Second down and seven now for Flutie. Stratford once again. Devane got the first hand on him. Took his shoe off. Stratford saying, it's bad enough you tackle me, don't undress me, too. <laughs> James Robinson also having an effect, of course, as all linemen do in a play like that. Now that play was either ill-conceived or it, it just didn't go properly. It, it looked like a half pitch, and it's not the type of play, uh, a slow-developing play to run on Clemson. They're too quick. Third down and five for Boston College. He looks for Brennan. In and out. Brian Brennan couldn't get a handle on it, so Boston College forced to punt once again. Tyrone Davis on the coverage. 
coverage on that play art was not all that good. If that ball had been a little lower, Brennan had a little room on the sideline, could have gone all the way. You can look for that play again. John Mahalik, the putter, he's averaging 37.5 a game in that first game of the year against Morgan State. Shanks it short and over end. Another good field position for the Clemson Tigers here in the first quarter with seven minutes and 48 seconds still remaining. Clemson scoring on an 18 yard drive in four plays getting the field goal leading the contest three to nothing. Two mistakes by Boston College's offense. The punter is an offensive player. That's a bad punt. Flutie's, uh, Flutie's fumble just a few plays ago and Clemson good field position on both those mistakes. Can't do that against a quality team like the Tigers. Mack, your lone uh, setback now. Ray Williams to the near side. In motion is Flagler. Mack has a good opening. What a block at the line of scrimmage that time. It's Mack. Touchdown. No flags. Let's check out the block at the line of scrimmage. Okay, there are not many teams that have a fullback that can go outside from an eye formation. Watch the block at the corner. Watch Mac come around. He has a lot of room. Looks like and there it is right there. Number 61 laying out. Cheat him. Now watch the bad tackling here. You can't push this guy down. He's too big. He's got great balance. Actually helped him along to the goal line. And there he goes. Kevin Mack for a touchdown. Number 61 cheat him with a terrific block at the corner. Ready, holding, the kick by Pauling is up. And it is good. He now has 41 straight extra points of flag, though, on the play. It was against Boston College. It'll count. And with seven minutes and 39 seconds to be played here in the first quarter, it's a 9 to nothing ball game for Clemson. One play all the way, a 42-yard drive. Ten to nothing. The field goal and the touchdown by Mack and the extra point. Well, we're we're well, at it took him nine seconds. Well, we're at Boston College, you know, and to get up ten to nothing against a team as highly touted as the Eagles. Remember, they were eight two and one last year. This is a big jump for Clemson. There had to be a little bit of a confidence problem. The uh, the Tigers were winning fourteen to nothing at the half last year. The Eagles came back and tied them. And in fact, that's the last game that Clemson did not win. So when you think about it, they come out roaring. It's got to help their confidence. As far as Boston College is concerned, they're saying to themselves, hey, we were down 14-0 last year. It's no big deal. We can do it again. Flutie so far in two series, only two for four for 13 yards. And that's the big key that we pointed out earlier. Igwe Buike is set to kick off once again. Your combination of Tyrone Taylor and Kevin Bell, deep to receive. Boy Buike had 13 field goals last year. And it was his field goal that tied that Boston College game with something like four minutes remaining for the 17-17 final. Another one. And this one hits the goal post. Unreturnable two out of two. If you're wondering about Igwe Buike's range, he kicked that ball from the 40-yard line and it hit the top of the right upright as it was heading for the stand. So this guy, we might get an opportunity to see this guy kick a 70 yarder before the season is over. Let's see if Boston College can get it together. There's the all time career passing leader for Boston College. He surpassed the career mark in his first ball game of the year rolling out cutting inside gets to the 29 to the 30 yard line where he's met by Eldridge Milton Milton with six tackles last week was called upon in a very crucial situation right there Flutie limping a bit there that was vintage Doug Flutie as he was rolling a naked reverse around the end and I gave James Robinson a little bit of a preview of what he can do as he stopped dead on a dime and cut inside of him Second down a yard. Stratford. He's met head on by Terrence Mack. James Robinson also helping out of the play. But it's enough for the first down. Boston College. At the 34 yard line. Terrence Mack is an interesting player. He's a freshman playing that bandit defensive end for Clemson. It's kind of an odd position. We'll talk about it later. He was a quarterback 
in high school, redshirted last year. This is his first year. Brown now in advantage. As Flutie drops straight back, Perry gets the heat on him, but he dumps it off to Stratford. Stratford battling his way. Gets a gain of only a yard on the play. James Robinson making the tackle. So he moves the ball just to the 35-yard line. Stratford now with five carries, 18 yards on the day. Down on the field. That was Troy Stratford. He's uh, he's all right. Just shaking up a little bit. He'll be back in the game. It seems as though they have to get Doug Flutie more involved in the offense. They're running the ball a little more than most thought they would. And it seems like they should use more plays that are designed for him and break up that Clemson defense a little bit. Make them think. Gerald Freeland to the near side. McKenzie to the far side now on a second and nine. The fullback also with the pattern over the middle. Stratford. He catches the ball at 40 and falls to the 39. Billy Davis to make the tackle after a very fine connection. Let's take a look at the secondary drop. Watch the two players to the top of your screen. This is a straight zone. Watch the receiver. As he comes down, he'll split the zone, and the safety does not get over fast enough. Great pass by Flutie. He's there for the tackle, but not to break it up. Flutie, 15 of 27 for 227 yards in their last ball game. As Boston College moving into Clemson territory for the first time. Once again, he's got an avenue to throw up the middle, but he comes to the fullback. Visek, he moves inside the 35 to the 33. Roy Brown, the tackle. Clemson's got to be saying, what do we do with this guy? Here, we get pressure on him. Quick feet. He looks immediately to the outlet man who's wide open and eight yards. That can go on all day. If you put pressure on the quarterback, you're going to leave one of these safety valves open and Flutie can find him. Arrington out. Mack comes in at the bandit spot. Second down and four for Boston College. Ball placement officially at the 32. Flutie now is four for six for 50 yards. Tucks it under, goes up the middle and can't get out of the grasp. Very nice tackle by Milton, Eldridge Milton from Folkestone, Georgia, 6'3", 220-pound sophomore, already with a letter. And he's gunning for his second letter in two years. Uh, we spoke about getting Flutie more involved in the offense. That was not a broken play. That's a play specifically designed for the quarterback. And the reason for that, he takes two steps back, hoping that the middle of the defense will drop into pass coverage and give him some running room. And before the day is out, we're going to see this kid loose in the secondary, and he can really scoop Robinson in for Berlin up front. Flutie hands off to his tailback. He's got the opening. Kevin Bell. Bell makes it inside the 15-yard line where he's met by Billy Davis. All right, make the defense think. That's what they're doing here. Maybe thinking pass. A big hole on the left side, and anybody can run through a hole like that. And Boston College does for a big gain and a first down. The veteran crew of receivers come into the ball game now. Flutie's favorite target, Brian Brennan, into the contest as a first and ten with 3.59 remaining here in the first quarter. The ball at the 14-yard line. Here comes Perry. There goes Flutie. Good defensive coverage that time. Terrence Mack in that bandit spot had the inside edge on the uh, defensive coverage. Well, if, if you're going to do anything to Flutie, you want to force him first to his left. He's a right-handed thrower and also to the short side of the field. The ball's on the left hash. You want to make him come left to the sideline. He ran out of room is what happened. He didn't have any place to run. The sideline is like another defensive player and Brennan was also on the short side of the field. Couldn't get loose. We have an incompletion. Second and ten. Stratford back in at the running back spot along with Besick the fullback. The fake to Stratford. Flutie goes for Besick, overshoots him, had him wide open, but the tremendous rush that time by Jimmy Scott. Wells was also in there, but Scott had his hands up high, and it gave Flutie nowhere to go, and it's, it's so tough to throw over someone who's 6'4", 250. Well, again, they did the same thing. They forced him to the short side of the field, away from his arm. 
he had to, and he is 5'9", right, exactly as you said, all right, he's going the wrong way, had to throw up over somebody, and what he did was overthrow the receiver. McKenzie to the near side, and it's Brennan. Split wide to the far side. Gieselman is your tight end on a third and ten. Looney looking, and he hits his, uh, Brennan, his favorite target at the seven-yard line. The ball ruled dead there at the seven. They might count it to the six-yard line. Let's take a look at this. Brennan is the type of kid that'll catch the ball in the crowd. Watch him. Right over the middle, and he's a hair's breadth. Stays on his feet from making this a touchdown. A good read by Flutie, a great pattern by Brennan, and pretty good defense by Clemson. That's Jeff football, Suttle folks. with his fourth tackle of the year, making the stop short of the first down. So it'll be fourth down and three yards to go for the first down. Kevin Snow into the lineup, their place kicker, five foot eight junior. He hit one field goal in their opening game of the season. It was a 31 yarder. Accurate kicker, five for five in the extra point department. Flutie so far is six for 10 for 54 yards. The kick is up. And the kick is good. Boston College on the scoreboard. With 2.51 remaining in the first quarter still. The score, Clemson 10. The Eagles of Boston College 3. Are stock prices going to fall or rise? Investors read Barron's to find out beforehand. Which way are interest rates headed? Investors read Barron's to find out beforehand. What's next for bonds? Precious metals, commodities, options. Investors read Barron's to find out beforehand. Beforehand, in time to do something about it. Every week, Barron's takes a long, hard look around the whole world of investing to help its readers take a long, hard look ahead. Next time you hear about some lucky investor who did really well, remember this. It isn't always luck. Sometimes it's Barron's. Get the next 26 weeks of Barron's for $32. Just call toll-free 800-554-9000. And also get as a bonus the helpful booklet, the ABCs of Market Forecasting. That's 26 weeks of Barron's plus the bonus booklet for just $32. Call 800-554-9000 now. Don't make a move without Barron's. Clemson ready to receive now. Stacy Driver to the near side. And uh, Ray Williams is to the far side. So Kevin Snow's 24-yard field goal gets Boston College on the scoreboard as their drive went four minutes and 48 seconds. A fine drive, Kevin. That was uh, vintage Boston College, I think. We saw a lot of Flutie, held onto the ball, uh, did a lot of different things, mostly in the air to set up the run, and it produced three points. Snow is ready to kick off. It comes to Stacy Driver's side. One yard deep, bobbles the ball, and he will not bring it out. Oh, he came close. That's one of those plays where <laughs> you can't breathe after, after you do it. When you look down and you're still behind the line, it's time for a prayer. Uh, Stacy didn't know what he wanted to do, and kickoff is not the time for indecision. Well, Stacy Driver with a very fine first series of plays. He carried the ball for 24 yards in four carries. He was averaging 5.3 after the first game of the season. And uh, now we've got Flagler in at the tailback spot. Kevin Mack is your fullback. Epley hands on the reverse move. Terrence Rulak. The end around, and we've got an injury down on the field. It's David Clayton, your right tackle. Is having to look like uh, some ankle problems on the field, and timeout is called. That was a wingback reverse. Uh, they had a wing or a tight slot, actually, on the strong side, and uh, they ran the ball, faked the ball to Flagler. What they probably picked up is that Boston College is keying on their tailback. They let the linebackers take a step that way, hand back to the slot back, and there was some running room there, although Boston College contained men was there. He was simply outrun. David Clayton, a promising young sophomore from Lyman, South Carolina. He's 6'4", 270 pounds. He's being attended to right now with two minutes and 35 seconds remaining here in the first period. Clemson leading the ball game 10 to 3. The winningest football team in America, college football-wise, over the last three years. 22-1-1 one one since that 81 championship season and 10 consecutive wins. And as Kevin pointed out earlier, the last team to keep Clemson from victory 
was this Boston College team with a 17 to 17 tie at Death Valley. Interesting to note also, Boston College had not been in a bowl game for 40 years. Here's Danny Ford who turned around the Clemson program in pretty short order. And uh, he's the pride of South Carolina right now. Uh, Boston College had not been in a bowl game for 40 years until last year against Auburn in the Tangerine Bowl. Who was the last team that they played in a bowl? Well, it was Clemson in 1943, losing to Clemson 6-3 to three in a bowl game. I don't know if uh, they were still holding a grudge, but that's an interesting piece of, uh, of information. Uh, their At first least, uh, game was in the Cotton Bowl. <laughs> their first game between each other in 1940. A 6-3 Clemson victory. Okay, second and five for the Tigers. Mack. He's broken some tackles today. You just cannot arm tackle that man. He makes it to the 31-yard line where he's met Pereira, Dave Pereira, a 5'10 junior. The way the Clemson offense, we have another injury to Boston College. Can't quite see the number of the player. Uh, it looks like Von Nessen, who they regard as one of their finest defensive linebackers, nine tackles in their opening game of the season. A two-year letterman from North Babylon, New York. And it looks like he's all right, uh, off under his own power. In that 52 alignment, those inside linebackers are key, and you don't like to see a kid come off the field, especially if you're a defensive coach who means so much to your defense. We hope Van Nessen's all right and he'll be back. Rulak to the near side. Charleston to the far side now as the pitch goes back to Flagler. Penalty flag down. Herrera once again to make the stop, but I think they'll bring it back. Offsides. No, it's on Boston. Boston College offside. They're getting a little bit anxious. Uh, Clemson again doing just about as they please offensively. Uh, key to this game, you can't let the fullback in Clemson's offense run for big yardage. Mack had 34 yards last week total against Western Carolina. He breaks one for over 40 yards against Boston College. That's got to throw the defensive coaching staff of the Eagles into a tizzy. Because this guy is not supposed to gain big yardage. When he starts running 40 yards, you've got a lot of problems. So it's a first and five now for Clemson after the offsides penalty is marched off. Williams and Boyer, your outside receivers. And they both come to the near side. KD Dunn, the tight end of the far side. Out of the eye formation. Epley still at quarterback. That's Flagler. Good speed your tight end down on the block and Flagler makes it to the 30 yard line watch Kevin Mack on this play watch watch the fullback on this play and I talk about keys watch where Kevin Mack goes he's the man in front of 33 he goes to the right Flagler cuts back across the grain that's the way the play is designed everybody's gone with the fullback and this guy on the loose in the secondary will not make you smile if you're wearing a burgundy shirt. James Farr picking off the linebacker who had to adjust to going to the wrong way that time. Done with the block. Tony Thurman made the stop finally. First and 10 Clemson now at the 29-yard line. No room up the middle that time. Mack tried, and Hemmer, Andy Hemmer, was right there to make the tackle from his right linebacker spot. He's from Cincinnati, Ohio, a freshman. Remember we said the strength of the Boston College defense, their best defensive player, 17 hits last year against Clemson, is Diasi, and they're running right at the middle of that defense. A gain of a yard on the play, second and nine at the 28-yard line. The Tigers on the move once again. Epley looks. Finds his man. It's done. K.D. Dunn from Decatur, Georgia, and he's picked off by Pereira. A gain of about seven yards on the play. This is, what, with a nice block this is what Flutie had trouble doing. Epley's left-handed, rolling away from his arm. Watch Boston College string him out. But they're not giving him any pressure, so he has time to throw. He's able to throw back. See that? It almost looks distorted, but he makes the throw. It's on target, and Clemson on the move. Ball down to the 21-yard line. It is third and three to go for Clemson. They're going to let the clock roll out here to end the first quarter. Two seconds, one second. There's the whistle, ending the first quarter of play. With the score, Clemson College 3. We'll pause now for a word from your local station.